Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul. And after Damon said, keep my wife's name out your f***ing mouth, we watched as a great banquet was held for the two families. After a food fight, Viserys ended up going to bed, where he mistakenly told Alison about Egon's prophecy. Just one problem, she believed that he was actually telling her their son Egon was the true heir and that he wanted him on the throne. Sh** is about to go down, and that takes us into episode 9. The trailer for the entry is now out, and throughout this video, we're going to be going through it all frame by frame to talk about what happens in it, the clues for what's coming next, and also some of the hidden details that you might have missed. Because of this, there will be heavy spoilers, so if you don't want it potentially ruined, then I recommend that you turn off now. If you enjoy the video, please show your loyalty by hitting the thumbs up button, and make sure you subscribe to join our house. Without the way, thanks for clicking this, now let's get into the House of the Dragon trailer. The king is dead. He told me you wish for Egon to be king. The door remains shut until we finish our business. None can know who you are or what you seek. What of Rhaenyra? I have found out something you should know. This is seizure! It is treason at the least! Have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? Okay, so the upcoming episode will be called The Green Council, and as you can probably guess, this involves Alison trying to place Egon as the king. The phrase Green Council was coined by Grand Maester Munkin in the book, and the image that accompanies it shows the shady conspirators all plotting together. Some on it were loyal to Rhaenyra, and this led to their downfall, so the name Green Council is fitting because it shows how much Alison forced everyone to bend to her will. In the books, the speech with her and Viserys never happened, and instead she just did this because she wanted to seize power. However, they've given her a reason here, and it makes more sense as to why she'll stop at nothing to try and carry out her late husband's apparent final wish. We open with an extremely somber intro, and have a focus on the Iron Throne, which now sits bare, symbolising its fallen king. The entire week after Viserys' death was filled with scheming and plotting from the Greens, as they try to put everything in place to make Aegon the king. Typically when a monarch died, the bells of King's Landing would be immediately rang to announce this, however they didn't do this due to potentially sounding the alarm for those who were loyal to Rhaenyra. Cut to Alicent once more sitting in Viserys' spot on the council, and she's joined by her two loyalist supporters. To the left is Otto Hightower, and on her right is Sir Kristen Cole, who sees her as sparing him after the wedding shambles. Because of this, he feels like he owes a debt to her, and will do anything he can to keep her in charge. This includes potentially killing Lord Beesbury, who we later see in the teaser shouting about how this is treason. Due to the books having several accounts over what happened, we don't know for definite what went on after he did this, though we do know that he indeed died. According to Grand Maester Orwell, he was arrested and thrown into a cell, where he eventually died due to a cold. However, Septon used to say that Kristen Cole slit his throat, which we could potentially see the aftermath of in the teaser. A knight at one point can be seen cleaning their blade, and it potentially comes off the back of just killing Beesbury. Later on we see swords being drawn on Kristen in the council room, and if you look in the bottom left, you'll see Beesbury slumped over. The account by Mushroom said that Kristen also threw him out of a window onto some spikes in the moat, but either way, the character doesn't make it past this meeting. Now this is known as being the first blood spilt during the Dance of the Dragons, and his death sets the idea that no matter how high up you are, you can get executed for questioning Egon is in the air. It's possible that Kristen also killed Sir Harold, who seems to be the one drawing the sword on him. If you cast your mind back to episode 1, you'll remember that he was very loyal to Rhaenyra, so it makes sense that he'd kick off at this point. Kristen ended up being the leader of the King's God in the book, so they'll probably have him kill him here and then take over his place. In the book after Viserys dies, he's discovered by his servant, and they immediately go and tell Alison about it. She quickly calls together the council, and they start to put things in place. They keep his death a secret until nothing can be done to change Egon's rule, and it looks like they're doing the same thing here. For example, in the source material, Rhaenyra went back to Dragonstone whilst all this was going on, and she wasn't in the kingdom when her father passed away. 
This made it even easier for Allison to keep things a secret because she didn't send any ravens and thus Rhaenyra only found out through word of mouth. I believe that she's still in King's Landing, however Rhaenyra might have actually gone back home as the person we see with golden hair fiddling with the door is Rhaenys instead of her. She's clearly locked in this room as she can't get it open and she might be held captive due to supporting Rhaenyra last episode. Either way, the Greens basically got everyone on their side by killing Beastbury and not letting people out of the meeting until they agreed Aegon was the king. This is highlighted by the line by Otto, in which he says, The door remains shut until we finish our business. And there's also a strange character that we don't see the face of, and he's told that none can know who he is and what he seeks. Looks like he's in the King's Guard, and that he's one of the higher ups because of the mission that he's been picked to carry out. We don't really learn what this is either, can't see his face because his back's turned, but we can see some very facial hair that could point to who it is. Now I personally think that this might be one of the Cargill twins who we see later in the teaser together. They appear to be in the same place that the fighting arena is and later on we see one going to grab Aegon so I'm guessing this is what they've been sent to do. Now even though these characters were twin brothers they supported opposite sides and this caused a mini civil war in the household. We do see one of them swinging a sword in a split second shot and potentially this could be them fighting each other. Now other theories involve this knight going to catch Rhaenyra and Daemon, however I don't really think that's the case because Daemon would just kick his ass. There could be another mission involved though and in the teaser we see what I believe is Aegon's bastard. The book talks about how he had one to his mother's maidservant and also one to a woman on the street of silk. I think this is likely the latter as we had the scene in 8 where Alison made the servant drink the plant tea. Aegon's bastard could cause a lot of problems and potentially his other children could be pushed out if this one came into the limelight. Potentially Arik could be sent in after him to hush things up before he becomes publicly known. Now his brother was an ally to Rhaenyra and he might even end up helping out her side. Because they look the same they could do some twin hijinks and have them disguise as the other to help or hinder them. Either way I think the whole thing with Aegon's bastard will be told to them by Laris Strong who we see saying that he's found out something. Potentially, Mazaria found out the same thing last week too, and this is why we saw Alison's servant travelling to her in the middle of the night. We see this servant being put into a cell at one point, so I'm wondering if she's the person who discovers Viserys and then she's locked up. Now, the book talks about how the person who discovered him was put into custody. However, this was a man, whereas the servant here is a woman, and because of that, they've gone f***ing woke. They've bloody gone woke. They've gone f***ing woke. I'm not having a woman on the throne. They've gone f***ing woke. Calm down, and she, she might just be being escorted to safety, as it appears she has a Targaryen child with her. Either way, she was the one wearing the cloak last episode, but in this teaser we have several other characters. We see Aemon donning one to hide his hair, and this once more hammers home the idea that he is an opposite to Daemon. There are two others in the trailer that wear this, including a one in the alleyway as people run through, and also one that moves through the crowd. These could be a number of different characters and we see one speaking to either Arik or Eric at one point. This appears to be a girl and it could either be Rain or Abela being smuggled out of the city. At one point we also see someone in a cloak jumping over an edge and this could be said person making their final escape. The shot of Aemon also has a distinctive set of steps and stones that we can see surrounding him. This also looks like the same place that the Cargill swings their sword and they're doing it against a hooded figure. Though we said it might be brother on brother before, this is likely against Aemon and it might get to show how much of a G he is. Now what follows this is Laris and it is important to bear in mind that he was one of the first people to swear loyalty to Aegon. He slashed his hand and gave a blood oath at the council and this slowly pushed the other people into doing the same thing. Now we see commotion in the street and this could be for a number of reasons. Aegon was publicly announced and lots of people gathered to see him, however it could also be that there's some uproar over Rhaenyra. We get what looks like several ceremonies and this includes knights raising their swords and people gathering at the dragon pit. This might be to show off Aegon's dragon sunfire and the Targaryen symbol was also changed to gold to reflect this. We also see Aegon running through the sept and this is likely the character trying to flee from his duty. He didn't want to be king and when he was told he was going to be he was getting a BJ off a woman. The book reads, moreover the prince refused at first to be a part of his mother's plans. My sister is the heir, not me, he says in Eustace's account. What sort of brother steals his sister's birthright? Only when Sir Criston convinced him that the princess must surely execute him and his brothers should he don the crown did Aegon waver. Whilst any true-born Targaryen yet lives, no strong can ever hope to sit on the Iron Throne, Cole said. Rhaenyra has no choice to take your heads if she wishes her bastards to rule after her. 
It was this, and only this, that persuaded Aegon to accept the crown that the small council was offering him, insists our gentle Septon. Now this is likely why we see him fleeing, and why he's grabbed by one of the twins. The trailer then ends with a voiceover of someone asking if they could imagine themselves on the Iron Throne. I think this is likely Alicent to Aegon when she's trying to convince him to become king. Lastly, we see a crown being placed onto a green cushion. This is symbolic for a number of reasons, because it's being placed firmly on a colour that represents the High Towers. I also believe this is Aegon the Conqueror's crown, and in the book we have an image of Sir Criston Cole placing this on Aegon's head. He wore one laced with rubies, and though they're missing here, we can see the spaces where they'd end up sitting. In the shot with Aemond, we can also see a blurred out figure to the left that's wearing the crown, and this appears to be Aegon. To the right is Helena, and also a member of the King's God, and this could be the moment where Criston places it on his head. In the book, Alicent ordered for Viserys' crown to be put in a vault, but this was stolen by a servant, which might tie in with the task that Otto is giving to one of the knights. Either way, Aegon clearly has chosen the Conqueror's crown for a reason, and it's a very important shot for the teaser. Aegon was of course named after his great-great-great-great-grandfather, and Viserys used to have dreams about how he saw one of his heirs on the throne wearing this crown. So the prophecy came true, but it's not good news, and this has major ramifications going forward. Other shots include lords kneeling down in front of Otto as he stands near the throne. To the left, you might notice Lord Caswell, who was one of Rhaenyra's loyalist supporters. I feel like he might get killed in the scene too, as he is executed in the book for refusing to switch sides. Alison really wanted her surrender, and if she didn't admit that Aegon was the rightful heir, then she'd have her murdered. Beesbury was a perfect example of this, and with Viserys out the way, there's no one left to protect her. Though he looked like the Crypt Keeper, he won't be wandering up the steps anytime soon, and thus she and her family are now on their own. I can't wait to see how it goes down, and with it being the penultimate episode, I really think that things are going to mount up to something big. Let me know your thoughts below, and hopefully i see you on our next House of the Dragon Breakdown. We are in a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of Thor Love and Thunder on the 15th of October, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the teaser. We pick the comments at random on the 15th, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, make sure you check out our breakdown of episode 8, which will be linked on screen right now. You've gone over all the callbacks to the books, the easter eggs, and yeah, definitely head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.